Okay, guys, here is Mah um, Becoming Muhammad Ali, round two. <clears throat> Maybe he didn't win the Golden Gloves championship in Chicago that year, but my friend Cassius is still bound for greatness. He just knew it. I, and I knew it, too. To tell the truth, I think losing their last fight made him work even harder. Made him focus. Nobody could focus like Cassius Clay. And he didn't let anything stand in his way. Not even a bottle of soda. Me? I loved soda. Especially ice-cold, frosty bottle, bottles on those hot <clears throat> Louisville summer nights. He did... Uh, so did most kids. It tasted so good. But... Uh, Cassius never touched it, not even a single sim. Sugar and acid ain't good for you, Lucky, he said. And that was that. Focus. For Cassius, there was no smoking either. I ain't gonna put that stuff in my lungs. And he always went to bed at 10 o'clock, even on Saturday nights. Like he wanted to grow in his sleep. Focus. After school, we went together, the two of us. And whenever we headed downtown, we stuck together tight. Tight like glue, and we kept... Our eyes wide open. Maybe going downtown meant crossing over into the white world. And in that world, four eyes were definitely better than two. All after Louisville, we saw signs that Cassius's dad had painted. And the white people who owned the stores underneath those signs stared at us when we passed by. Like they were just waiting for us to do something wrong. Or say something fresh. Or take something we didn't pay for. One day we passed a bicycle store and there was a line of bikes out front. The bright chrome fenders and front wheels all turned to one side and at the end one bike stood out past the others. It was a brand new Schwinn black Phantom with white sidewall tires, pinstripes, and sparkly paint. It was the coolest bike either of us had ever, ever seen. <coughs> Cassius gave out a low whistle when he saw it. Look at that bike, Lucky, he said. That's the kind of bike I should be riding. Cassius reached out and stroked the handlebars like he was petting a cat. The chrome gleamed between his fingers, and when he heard the back, then we heard the back shop door open. The owner and his wife stood in the doorway, halfway out at the top of the cement steps. We froze. You boys don't want nothing with that bike, said the man, his face all red and puffy. He started to come down the steps at us, but his wife put a hand on his arm. She seemed a little softer, but still strong enough to stop him. She had reddish-brown hair and a green dress. Scoop now. <clears throat> you boys get on home. She knew exactly where home was. Home meant the west side, a mostly black Louisville. It was one of the few parts of the city where the Clays and my folks could buy a house. In most parts of the town, they couldn't get a loan to buy a house. Couldn't even walk into the most hotels or diners. Wides only, the sign said. When Miss Clay took Cassius downtown as a kid, he got confused because nobody there looked at him. Mama Bird, Cassius would ask, what did they do with all the colored people? One day when Cassius was little, he stood outside at a five and dime store crying because he was thirsty. When Miss <clears throat> Mrs. Clay went inside for a drink of water, the store guard made her leave. If we serve Negroes in here, we lose our jobs, the guards told her. So Cassius went home thirsty, mad the whole way. Cassius was so young, his mama thought that he wouldn't remember that day. But he did. Granddaddy Herman's living room was always like church to me. It was the congregation, his couch, my pew. The rhythm and blues on the radio was the choir, and the ebony magazine was his Bible. His sermons were sometimes poems, other times stories from history, his in America's, but my daddy, granddaddy's sermons always ended up the same. Know who you are, Cassius, and those, <clears throat> and whose you are. Know where you're going, and know where you're from. Amen, amen, amen. Where I'm from, I'm from black Cadillacs, from plastic covered sofas and tiny pink houses. I'm from the one bathroom we all shared in the living room we stayed out of. I'm from Friday fish, Friday fried, fried fish and chocolate birthday cakes, from Levi Brothers slacks and tiny white shoes, from Cash and Bird, from Storytellers and Good Looks, from Don't You Say You Can't Till You Try. I'm from the Kentucky Derby in the land of baseball bats. From the two Cassius Clays before me, one black and one white. One from sla I'm from slavery from, to freedom. From the West End to Smoketown, from the unfulfilled dreams of my father to the hallelujah hopes of my mama. My mama smells like vanilla. 
is always smiling, loves cooking, and I bet could make a whole Sunday outfit out of needle and thread. Odessa Bird Clay may be the smallest of the clays, but her heart is the biggest. Wide as the sea, and when she sings at Mount Zion, Zion Baptist, her voice is like water, sweet, soft and sweet as a hummingbird. She says, the day that I was born, my head was too big to come out on its own, so the doctors yanked me with some so sharp tongs that left a small square bruise on my cheek. She says, I hurt so much that I cried and hollered most of the night and into the next day, which got the other babies in the ward screaming too, and probably I was sounding a rally cry to all the little soldiers for all the brown babies in the world to stand up and be counted. After that, I vowed to never let anyone put a mark on my face again. <clears throat> Cassius Clay versus Odessa Bird Clay, March 14, 1943. My first knockout punch came at the age of one when I accidentally hit my beautiful mama in the mouth and knocked her front teeth clean out. When Bird gets mad at me about something I did wrong, she calls me Cassius Marcellius Clay Jr. <laughs> but mostly, I'm just Gigi. Because <clears throat> she says, before I could even crawl, I was running my mouth. And the first sound I made was the letter G. Twice. But probably I was just dreaming aloud, foreshadowing my fate, trying to voice my future as a Golden Gloves champion. My brother Rudy came two years after me, and ever since um, I've been like two golden stars in the northern skies, inseparable, and our parents brought hope. Now, my daddy, Celsius Mer uh, Cassius Marcelsius Clay Sr., better known at, around Louisville as Cash, is the opposite of bird. He's six feet t He's six feet of bronze and brawn, and when he isn't singing or scalding or dancing or joking with his Saturday night buddies away in the Sunday morning, he's painting masterpieces, old Bible scenes on church walls, new billboards and signs and storefront windows, happy the whole time. Signs my father painted, open lunch and dinner, dreamland bar and soul food cafe, our own communi community de classe. Best charcoal ribs in Louisville, parked around back, whiskey by the drink, serving fresh ice cream, colored waiting room, this way for fun, uh, <clears throat> Fantine Ferry Park, whites only, segregation is immoral, there's no way like the American way, vote for progress, we cut heads, Piercy's Barbershop, <clears throat> now buy victory bonds, rock and roll, sold here, closed on Sundays. Sometimes days when Papa Cash would stumble in after being out all night, Mama would ask him when he's going to fix the wobbly front porch or the leak in the roof, and he'd ignore and start fussing and then leap back out of the house with me and Rudy. Tagging right along over Granddaddy Herman's house, who would give us something sweet, like Black Jack Taffy, show us magic tricks, tell us funny and not-so-funny stories about famous and not-so-famous Negroes, bounce us on his one good knee with all the white-smoking all the while smoking a cigar and arguing with my daddy, till they fell, both fell asleep. Growing up, when Rudy could walk to get a pet chicken, a dog named Rusty, and a new house with a brand new backyard near the size of a basketball court where we would play with Rusty and chase the chicken and each other around. They had a goldfish pond that I watched daddy build, plus a vegetable garden with snap beans that I loved to peel and onions that I loved to eat raw. Everything was easy going and laid back on our side in the West End where we lived, so that's where we played and prayed and went to school and grew up, but every now and then we'd cross a line and wonder why we couldn't stay and play on the other side of it. The other side, when Rudy got old enough for Bird to let me take him out and about, we ran, jumped, and played on every inch of Chicksaw Park because it was our neighborhood, but we'd never been to Fontaine, uh, Ferry Park, even though it had amusement rides and even though it was right next to our neighborhood. We were going to go to Fontaine and dare anybody to stop us. We told Mama we were walking over to Granddad Herman's uh, to help him chop some wood, which was true, but first we were going to cross the line and go have some fun at Fontaine Park. Uh, the Watts only sign met us at the fence outside the park, and the two police officers with Colt 45 pistols made sure we stayed there. Later that day, we chopped wood in silence, and when we were done, Granddaddy Herman preached a sermon that we'll never forget. 
to Louisville's for a Negro boy in the West End. We know you can play tag in Chicksaw Park, but you better not be caught dead in Shawnee Park or Boone Square. No matter how many times you bear the crack of wooden roller coasters, smell the hot buttered popcorn, and watch thousands of happy white kids eat cotton candy, you know you're not allowed in Fontaine. Boys, there's two Louisville's, one where you can where you go shopping for clothes and one where you can't. Uh, try on the clothes beforehand or bring them back if they don't fit. One where you roller skate outside your house and one where you're not allowed to inside the local rink. One where you can go to some movie theaters and one where you can go sit on the balcony and ba barely hear the movie. One where you got a decent job with decent pay and one where you get to raise, get a raise but your house payment goes up. One where you go to the amusement park with your friends, and one where you stand outside the fence like a caged bird singing the summertime blues because your skin is like a crow, black and unwelcome. One for whites and one for blacks. Know who you are, boys, and those you are. Know where you are going and where you're from. Amen, amen, amen. I want to be rich. I said to Rudy as we lay in the backyard under the stars talking to the chicken and each other about being famous one day like Chuck Berry. That way they'd have to let us into the amusement park. But since neither one of us could sing or dance and we both loved to slap box, we figured maybe we could be rich like Joe Lewis instead. Of, instead, buy the darn park and buy and build the first American Cadillac roller coaster. Candy Apple Red, so that any kid could get into Clay Park and ride the rides. Mama hollered from the kitchen, interrupting our moonlit dreams and big ideas. GG, time for you and Rudy to wash up and say your prayers and go to bed. I liked pranks, so I stood up, told Rudy, don't move. There's a great big old copperhead snake in the grass next to your head. And he jumped up, screaming all the way into the next week forgetting all about Fontaine Ferry Park, but I never did. And that's round two.